Hey everybody, I am Matt Hill. I'm in the Trace Management Podcast Studio. Trace Management is a oil and gas engineering and consulting firm, and they've done me a, a great honor by giving us a space to work on energy literacy in you know every space possible. You know, invite guests in, support them and their causes, and we have a great guest today. Uh, introduce yourselves. I'm Dara McBee, and I'm Katie Kenmith. We're with the Oklahoma Energy Resources Board, or OERB. Um, for those that don't know, we work on behalf of Oklahoma Oil and Gas. Uh, we're funded by one tenth of one percent of a tax assessment on the sale of oil and gas. Um, we were founded in 1993 at the request of the industry um, to do two main things. We, um, a lot of people have heard of our well site cleanup program or land restoration program, where we cleaned up orphan or abandoned well sites across the state. That's the first thing I saw about you guys. I think maybe even before I was in oil and gas, it was like, hey, we clean up, you know, well sites. Yeah, a lot of these sites are they're historic, so 100 sure. years old in some cases, or more than 100. So um, we get to do a lot of good things on behalf of the industry. Again, it's all voluntarily funded. People can get a refund. Um, and we have about 95% of companies that keep their money in every year. Yep. Um, and then the other half of what we do is education. Um, and that's from K through 12 to um, we have some technical training programs. We do college scholarships. And then we do energy literacy or public education. And we also have producer education. Um, so um, for our producer education was SOAR, which was the Marginal Well Commission. Um, now it's called Sustaining Oklahoma's Energy Resources. We love an acronym. We keep, uh, we keep an acronym <laughs> going. I, I just sent my buddy... Uh, all of them because he was like hey how do i get started like looking through you know because i i have the oil field tailgate page and it has a calendar of events on it and i made that thing just for me at one point and then i'm like oh yeah now it's can, all over now i can well i can share you know a google calendar pretty easily but he asked me i said hey it's probably not up to date yet i've been on the road and he goes like, well, where did I go? I'm like, okay, that's easy. A A D E S P E I A D C O E R B O E P A. And it was like I kept going, and he's like, stop, never mind. I'll just wait on you to update your deal. But I think we probably have close to, I mean, at least probably 30 organizations in Oklahoma that are dedicated to our industry in some form or fashion, which is remarkable. So anyway, continue. Sorry. It is. And we're really, you know, OERB is kind of the, it's definitely the gold standard in the nation. We're the only state that has a well site com uh, cleanup component, which was just the vision of our leaders, you know, 26, 7, close to 30 years ago. Um, so Oklahoma really is um, heads and shoulders above the rest as far as that goes. And our education programs too. We have K through 12. We have nine curricula that are energy literacy. Um, we teach thousands of teachers every year how to use that curriculum in a classroom. We give them free classroom materials. We give them free field trips again. And it's all, you know, through funding from the oil and gas industry. One thing that we're excited about, we just went through and revamped our Petrotech program, which mm -hmm. is offered through um, Tulsa Tech and Francis Tuttle here in Oklahoma City. Um, so we just made, wanted to make sure that we're offering the best classes that people need right now. We found, we did some short track um, components so you can get like a land tech or certification faster than you would have normally. Um, but for the first time ever this fall, we're offering the entire program for free. Wow. So we're going to do two classes, one class in Oklahoma City, one class in Tulsa. If you can get in under that class kind of cap, um, you will get free certification. And so again, you could be a geotech, land tech, or an engineering tech. Um, a lot of our students, we don't guarantee it, but a lot do get hired even before they get certified. It's all hands on deck right now. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know very many uh, operators or service companies that aren't you know, looking around saying, hey, we're, you know, our industry is growing like we knew it would. Right. And we need people that at least are interested in being trained. Or even someone who's not in the industry and wants to completely oh, yeah. change their, their track too, which is great. Yeah, I absolutely am fascinated by all you guys offer. That's why I've been begging you guys <laughs> being here. Like, hey, when you get time, because obviously all those programs don't occupy any of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we can talk for days. Yeah. I, you're getting a Cliff Notes version, so we need to come back. so we can. Oh, I, yeah, I totally meant to be, this yes. to be a series. It needs or, to be a standing event. <laughs> yeah, or you guys can just be my co host going forward, and the three of us will invite yes. one person in to grill each week exactly right? like that what have you fun. been doing for oil and gas uh -huh. today 
And, you know, I, I, I love the stories of our people. So obviously I'm going to ask, like, what, what did you, uh, what's kind of your history? Where did you grow up? You know, how did you get into oil and gas is what you're doing today? So I'm from Elgin, yep. Oklahoma. Um, was in the FFA, showed she went to OU for my undergrad and master's um, and was in news right out of college. I was a reporter and anchor at the ABC affiliate in Lawton, um, you know, kind of my hometown. And uh, did that for five years. And then Mike Terry hired me to come to the OERB to do communications. And I've been there ever since. Did Almost you, 10 years. Did you Crazy. have a, a lot of knowledge of oil and gas at all before uh, you got to the OERB? Or just like, you know, I'm, I obviously use oil and gas at some point, but I don't really know the whole thing. Everyone that grows up in Oklahoma knows something about it for the most part especially in rural oklahoma you don't point out there and go look at that fracking machine right Thanks. but i i wouldn't have i wouldn't have been able to tell you that no um and so you know not much um and so it's been a, a learning ever since i'm i'm always learning i'm yeah. still obviously not i'm not in definitely not an engineer uh but i i'm it's that's what's so fun about this job is it's always changing there's always stuff to learn there's always stuff to learn. What about mm -hmm. you, kiddo? I am also from Lawton, so there's that. And grew up there. I went to college in Ohio. Stayed there for 10 years or so, moved back. Ohio has a lot of great oil and gas stuff going on. They do. They do. And I did political consulting for my first job out of college back in Oklahoma. And then got went over to OERB. For a Republican? For a, what, what uh, for political action committees. Political action committees. Yes. Packs, yeah. And so I didn't re really know anything about oil and gas. The only thing I knew about it was my sister worked in oil and gas. And that was... She's a rock star too. And that was basically <laughs> my bare minimum. And like Dara said, like learning something every day, new every day. People from Lawton are the salt of the earth. If you grew up from Lawton, you, made it, you have a lot of character. Yes. <laughs> are good people. I agree. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, by all means, you guys have an island, you know, down there. There's not a whole lot of towns right around you. It's not, you know, Oklahoma City. So you guys mm -hmm. have kind of created your own place. And you guys got a lot of outdoor stuff. So I always see a lot of people from Lawton, like really, uh, you know, uh, natural resources kind of people, you know, they're in, and, and pro America by far because, you know, you have the Fort military Hill. right mm -hmm. there. So yeah, I love Lawton as well. I go down there and do a little hiking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chase rattlesnakes, all the good things. Only thing to do. Buffalo elk, <laughs> man. Now you're getting excited. Like I might have to run down to Lawton and go, go, uh, check it out. It's a, you know what? Never mind. It's way too hot right now. It's not, not it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so what can people do, you know, to, uh, in our industry, are you noticing that is really, you know, driving energy literacy? You know, is it just pushing them toward, you know, OERB and saying, hey, look, I, I'm busy right now, but I don't have the resources, and boom, they do. What are you given to, uh, you know, work with teachers, stuff like that? So teachers, obviously, they can come to a workshop. That's a little bit of energy literacy. We launched a new program probably a year ago now, and we're just about to kind of get some new modules on it. It's called our ambassador program. Um, and so it's really for industry professionals. We, you know, we're not asking people to go on the news, but a lot of what we find is you're an engineer, you're an expert at whatever it is that you do, but you don't know about tax contributions or, you know, some maybe environmental things that are people are your friends, your family, your neighbors are asking you. So we want to provide a toolkit for these people to have these conversations with their friends, family, neighbors. And so that's what it is right now. There's eight modules, you know, environment, economy, those things. We have been in some research from Dr. Scott Tinker down at the University of Texas. What he does, I think, is really... Um, exciting. Uh, really, it's kind of like the true cost of energy. Um, and so he just did a TED talk that we're going to add as a module, um, I think is, is really important. Um, and we need that, to get Alex Epstein to yeah. add a TED talk as well. Well, he, module. I love Alex Epstein mm -hmm. right now. Well, maybe because his new books out. So I'm super, uh, yeah. I'm like, everyone keeps talking about it. I'm super fanboyed out right now on, on Alex and all of those talking points. And, uh, man, there's just so much to like, have to arm yourself with you know really good data and facts um you know and then the other piece that we wanted to do is not just connect with our industry but also connect with our people who um use a lot of our products but maybe don't know how to feel about us one way or the other that's really where we're trying to reach everybody uses our product like, right. we mm -hmm. don't have a human being on earth right. you know unless you're living in a jungle rubbing sticks together but you're using oil and gas now um and love it because of the molecule uh that energy man it's just it's so efficient right right it's reliable reliable abundant yes all the good things we need to flourish as human beings right 
And so we're trying to reach that subset, that kind of neutral people in the middle who just don't know one way or the other. And so that's why we had we had Mike Rowe come in. Um, and he went around the state learning about oil and gas. He visited with people, you know, down in Ellick um, and Thank added. You pronouncing it, that correctly. My sister taught uh, there for a long time. Yeah. It is correct. Yeah. We worked on that. Uh, yes. And uh, in Chickasha, at a little diner in Chickasha, at um, a drilling rig up in by Cashin. So we went all over the state. We went to Okarchi High School. Um, and just talk to the people of Oklahoma and the people of Oklahoma Oil and Gas. And he really just wanted to learn about the industry. He's a fan of what we do. You know, he's a fan of people who make something. Um, and so we thought it was a great kind of person to have come here. And so we have started releasing some videos of some of those stories of Oklahomans. They're on our website at oerb.com forward slash micro. Yep. You'll start seeing them on TV during, you know, the football season too. We still have a lot we haven't even released. Uh, we'll be releasing new videos in that series through probably October. Um, and it'll culminate with his in-person appearance at our Oklahoma Oil and Gas Expo. Where does he live at? Does he live in California? California. Oh, mm -hmm. man. He, you know what? He should make an escape and come live with us. Mm -hmm. I agree. California. Yeah. Bring, bring him to the oil field tailgates anytime he's in town during the season, okay? He's a good ambassador. He has a lot of he good conversations a, yes. with his neighbors and stuff. Yeah. So. I think that was like the coolest thing too was he, every different type of person could relate to him in what we did. So that was just cool for other people to see it that way too. We had um, his, some of his stories in uh, movie theaters. So before Top Gun and some of the big summer blockbusters. And someone saw it before Top Gun and wrote on his page that she was disappointed. And he... You know, he didn't reach out to us. We He did his own kind of response, and it went viral. Um, we've had people call from all over the nation. Pennsylvania Oil and Gas Association released a fact sheet on just his response. So he's, we think, a great person. He reaches, you know, across, you know, just so many people really, really love what he does. He's such a good guy. His technical training scholarships is another, you know, reason we really like him. Um, and so that just kind of showed, like, there is an appetite for for like a common sense approach to energy in our country and so we think that he's you know a great all, all of us have to become mm -hmm. that kind of ambassador mm -hmm. i mean that's that's why i'm doing this i, I stopped trying to beat the left over their heads yeah, with today's world yeah like listen this is this is so vital I, it's catastrophic catastrophic if we shut down oil and gas in a ton of ways now listen I'm not saying don't subsidize like we do alternate, you know, energy research, but also don't penalize us when we're providing the main source of energy for I have unforeseeable future as of right now until there's decades. I mean, we oil and gas has been researched and utilized for so long. We have those layers and layers and layers of decades of research to harvest those as efficiently as we do. And we're still not, I mean, we only, when we drill a well, we're scraping out ten percent of our resources, and that's the and it's still the most efficient energy resource out there, other than possibly what could become someday nuclear. But again, we don't have because of the almost to the point of, uh, I mean, almost to the point of illegal. You know, you can't really go and research how to utilize nuclear. So this is our this is our energy, and we're on the front lines of hey. We can trigger other, you know, people who disagree with us, or we can say, "Hey, I understand that you've been taught something different. If you would like to discuss it, I, you can either listen to me, or there are a lot of experts, you know, smarter with with uh, better data, and you can find out for sure that this going forward cannot be stopped, or humans will not flourish." Everything you said is kind of baked into our ambassador program. Yep. That's the goal of it. So I encourage people to sign up for that, and we're going to have. Katie sends you a swag bag when you get done with the first eight, and we're going to start doing some exclusive networking um, pieces around that too. But yeah, it is. I could talk about it for days, but we have some really interesting things that you just said that are in there. I think Scott Tinker has a few pieces specifically about kind of some of the stuff you just said. What do you What do you guys uh, see as the future of the OERB? Because you guys, you know, in that same building down there, it's a really, I love the layers of, you know, common goals and common people and uh, outreaching you know in every part of our industry you have the petroleum alliance which is people going out to speak to our you know lawmakers and leaders and giving them those tools for education and saying hey we need you to make sure and not restrict us from doing our jobs and here's why and then you have you going out to the public and then you also have the cleanup side of it and then soar 
on and on and on. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And thank God we have, you know, all three of you going after it every day. That's right. You know, we are in the same building. Um, Their advocacy, we're not advocacy per statute. We can't, you know, influence legislation. So that's something that differentiates us, but we're able to kind of work parallel, I think, and make each other stronger. Um, And so that's really exciting. And one thing that we did a couple years ago is kind of a slight rebrand. So instead of just OERB and some people don't know what that means, our logo now is Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas uh, because we are on behalf of the people of Oklahoma Oil and Gas. So we want people to use our restoration numbers, our education numbers, and the materials that we donate, the field trips that we donate. We want them to use that for their ESG reports. So we're kind of, you know, thinking through ideas of There's easy ways to do that. There's something you can add to it. You can add somebody at the on staff maybe to help people write ESG reports. Well, Soar, uh. <laughs> ding, ding, Soar, actually, our producer education team um, are working on a program with that. I think they're going to partner with OU on that. Yeah, so, let, the, let the interns do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the good news is we are going to offer that because that is a huge component. Everyone needs that ESG report now. So just educating people how to do that. Yeah, I, uh, man, that's, that's excellent. I mean, so many students now, you know, are coming to uh, enlightenment of like, oh, I, I've been told oil and gas is going to go away, but no, with, you know, they're smart. They, they can see the big picture of, no, it's going to grow. You know, every, every country that didn't have it before is going to have, you know, tools to go out and harvest their most efficient resource, which is oil and gas. So we're going to be helping them and they're going to train engineers from all over the globe at our schools because we know how to do it here in Oklahoma. And, and there's other great schools around the nation, but ours, you know, come on, Oklahoma. Yeah. So... How, how many wells do you think OERB has helped go? Or, I'm sorry, now it's Oklahoma Oil and Gas. Well, we're OERB. Okay, mm-hmm. so how many wells do you think they've helped clean up over the years? Do you have any numbers on that? We do. Um, it's We're now over 18,500. It's probably like 18,600. Wow. Mm-hmm. How many on the list to uh, go out and look about, at? About that same amount. To go out and further remediate. Mm-hmm. And, and what's that entail? Like Sometimes it's like, hey, we need to... Go out and put, uh, you know, just get rid of the salts and the and the hydrocarbons with you know different products out there. Uh, like my, you know, or is it like sometimes like hey we have, we're gonna have to uh, you know dig it up and move it. So we do everything except for plugging yeah, so no far. Plugging, yeah. We potentially you know so so far, um, but a lot of it's surface damage, concrete debris. Um, if it's in a rural area, we will break that concrete up and bury it. We work with local contractors all over the state. So that gives money, you know, to the local communities. Um, we are exempt from the state bidding practices. So we're able to work faster and more efficiently. Um, we uh, Cheaper is not always better. And so we clean up and the salts. Salt water scarring is a major thing that we clean up. It's cheaper a lot of times to just build a pond yep. the team that we've been working with for you know more than 20 years to do it they're experts now and so those ponds are totally fine the salts are heavier than the water so you can put fish in it the first question we get asked when we go to someone's land is well when's when's my pond going to be ready and it's like well you don't qualify but we do a lot of ponds every year um because that is you know, everybody gets a the pond. easiest yeah. way yeah <laughs> Or, uh, I mean, my, my, maybe my lawn has a, you know, an old well side in the back <laughs> that I'm going to go find and can get a right. pool. <laughs> a pool. Um, a concrete pond. <laughs> <laughs> it dates me, I guess. I was the only one to watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, have also cleaned up some mud pits. I mean, we kind of do everything. As long as it's not plugging a well, we'll consider it. We work with the OCC or the BIA to determine if there's a responsible party. Um, And we do everything we can to make sure there is no responsible party. Again, like in Osage, we've only been cleaning up wells there for about 10 years. And then we got a good relationship with the BIA and have cleaned up probably 1,500 now in in Osage. Um, A lot of those are from the 1920s. So we cleaned up a wooden tank battery last year that's how old they are it's neat to go talk to those guys i mean they're they're talking about how some of those valleys you know they the the first cars and they had their headlamps that they would you know have to light with you know matches and stuff and they had to push their car out of those valleys so they wouldn't ignite like a, and have a big you know explosion in the mornings to get moving wow because all those you know the gases or the hydrocarbons would sit you know, low to the ground in those valleys so they're like let's push our car out of here Gosh. before everybody lights it up mm-hmm. right like boom yeah, I have a man. I need to make sure and introduce you guys. My uh, my uncle Craig has a really neat uh, new technology where uh, you can either go out and uh, plug the well, or maybe just put a new uh, piece of uh, casing patch in it and and uh, 
it might be something uh, really uh, quick for everybody to use. It's new technology, but I'll, I'll make sure and get you guys his information. Uh, not the well, not the plug the wells, but that's a component of it. And there, you know, there's a lot of talk about plugging and abandoning wells around the country. So this is actually able to not necessarily plug it forever, but once you know it's there, you know it's safe. But then, you know, sometime in the future, if we have the technology, we want to go back and re-enter those wells. It'll be available. That's great. So it takes everybody. What uh, what else you got going on? What's weird events coming up? You got big events coming up. We do. Um, so SOAR is another branch of OERB, like I mentioned. Um, and so their annual, which will probably a lot of people have heard about, the Oklahoma Oil and Gas Expo. This is the 25th anniversary this year. So we're calling it Expo 25. Um, and our goal is to make it, you know, the biggest event to date. Um, we wanted to make it a celebration of Oklahoma Oil and Gas. It's the biggest oil and gas show in Oklahoma anyway. I mean, we have some, you know, great ones that come in. You know, we have the the hard and others, but uh, I'd say yours by far is the most highly attended. Looking forward to it. Everybody loves to come. You have uh, speakers there this year? So this year we're going to have Micro. We haven't ever had a speaker in the past, but this year he's going to come and he'll be speaking. Um, we, it, you know, and it's the only event that's put on by volunteers. So it's put on by the industry for the industry. Um, we still have a lot of booth spaces. Our platinums are sold out. The booths aren't, Hey, you got to put them in booth. They're, they're not, uh, they're not bad. They're, uh, it's very cost effective. We're not in it to make money. No, you're you know, there to some of highlight oil and gas. Right. You know, yeah, absolutely. Right. Vendors. I mean, if make you contacts have contacts all day mm -hmm. long, networking is key. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've all learned that. Like how can, and that's something I learned, you know, the, you know, forever ago because I had good mentors. Like networking is about you meeting someone and seeing what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. That's in, and sure enough, that's pretty much what our industry is about. That's right. Yeah. And this year we're trying to make it because it is our 25th anniversary, trying to make it a little, give them a little bit more in having more EMPs partnering with service companies to do our barbecue competition, which is going to be so much fun. And we have six teams so far right now. That's good. Yes. And we're, yeah, we're shooting to, they will have two awards, the, the judges panel and the people's choice. So, so the six teams, the six, memorize the teams. The six teams are, we have Continental and Select, we have Oventive and Flex Kim, uh, Through Tubing and Caliber Resource Partner, uh, Slumberjay and Gulfport, CP Energy, Priority and Tally Production. I feel like I could probably be in that just for my barbecue beans. Like I'm not, I'm, well, I'm not going to make the meat. It's but. just a small bite is all yeah, we're asking. Exactly. Uh, we kind of modeled it off of North Dakota has a cook fest. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of like that. It's just one small bite each team is going to make. We're going to have a panel of judges. It's going to include micro. Um, it's going to include state leaders. He's um, from California. I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have some like official barbecue judges. Okay. Cause I don't want like him to like pop up and go, Hey, I, I eat tofu cube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding like <laughs> um, and so we we added this to, you know, one of our drives every year is to get as many, you know, we have service companies that come and have the booth. So they want to meet the producers. And so we have a, a marginal well, like the small producers that are there. We really wanted our big companies too. So we have, uh, you know, now we have Continental and Oventive. And so we're going to have more than ever those people there. So um, if you're wanting to be a barbecue team, we still need more. Um, we are saying it's the most bang for your buck as far as the sponsorship because it's Except really just Except for Warfield tailgate parties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. I guess we'll let that slide. I mean, you've been. <laughs> She's basically my co-host down there nowadays. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, I, I show up and all of her friends are like, let's do I this. I bring all my friends, of course. You should. I want you to. All your friends are in oil and gas. That's the, exactly. what's the parties for. Yeah. You're, you've, you were prepared for this, you know, conference, this little <laughs> conference of years long before. <laughs> Well, you started coming to that before you were even doing this, right? Yes. Your sister was uh -huh. bringing you. Yeah. Always came with her. Yeah, that's funny. I like it. Um, thank God. So, yes. you want, so you're in oil and gas because of me. You found out exactly. that the oil field tell you. Exactly. It does come What is this circle. oil field thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I know how to recruit people in this industry. <laughs> get, them, get them down to Norman to the oil field tailgate party. That's right. That's how you got in this too, probably. Somebody brought you in because of the oil field tailgate. It all circles back. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. All right. So... 
we've gone through the OERB. What am I missing? Like you guys brought notes. This is the you are my most prepared guest ever. Well, we want to make sure we hit all the highlights. There's a lot. All the highlights. Hit them all. Go. So yes, yeah, so Expo. You know, we encourage all companies to come out and have a booth. It's really cheap, and we're working deals this year. So just reach out to us. But we're definitely, if you think of a lot of expos, whatever they, their cost of booth, it's not that. Again, we're not in it to make money. We're in it to celebrate Oklahoma oil and gas. We it's a networking event. It's an educational event. We want people to come. Um, uh, you know, we still have a lot of boosts. I think our platinums are gone. Mm -hmm. Platinum's gone. We have silver, gold, and just a regular exhibitor. And a legacy. Yeah. There is still oh, a yes. legacy. And legacy. And and I'm sure there's other ways to sponsor as well. If you don't, if you don't even want to have 100%. a booth, what, what else can I do? Yeah. Well, you can be a barbecue team. Yeah. Um, and if and you are a barbecue team, you get a free booth. Okay. If you want one. Yeah. At work, you can have a free booth next year. Um, again, the barbecue team's probably going to get the most visibility. That's why we say it's kind of probably the biggest bang for the buck. Um, because you're going to have... You know, I don't want to promise, but probably the governor is going to be one of our judges if he's if he's available. We're gonna have if you and Pinnell don't show up, I'm going to start. <laughs> well, we're it. we're asking both of them to be on our judges yeah. panel, and then Mike Rose. So you're getting that those people are going to come by your booth, and then everyone there that's going that wants to eat are going to be coming by your booth. So we think it's a really big value. And again, this year we're we're making deals. Mm -hmm. You know, we're. You're not going to let one inch of that space go to waste. That's right. Exactly. There you go. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. You're going to have clowns and balloon attendees. people and probably show some sheep. I would, yeah. <laughs> okay. We what, can have that How much does year. it cost he has a sponsor to have her show sheep? A I lot. will go in with you. I don't even know. I, I mean, I, I get off I'll get off in the weeds here, but yesterday one of my buddies, and I know he was in, in uh, the FFA, but he sent me a video, and there was like a lady like, Fluffing the tukus of a sheep. <laughs> I didn't even know they had like the big old tukus. First right. of all, I was like, what in the, why are you sending The this? good ones do. Yeah, the good ones do. <laughs> she knows it all. Yeah, so there you go. We might have some uh, sheep fluffers. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> like you get to like get yeah, them all dolled up. Yeah, Now you can when have When I showed resume. you, it was really slick. You sheared them like really slick, but now they leave a little fur and they do like them fluffed up more. It's changed since my days yeah they look odd uh -huh. i don't want yeah so there you go we're gonna but most importantly we're gonna have a full-blown oil and gas rig in the parking lot and we're gonna go drill that day right everybody gets a turn at the uh, <laughs> you get to throw you get to throw uh, some chain that's what i heard honestly it's gonna be not awesome. a bad idea mm -hmm. if we well, yeah. figure out that, that would so work. incorporate that next year too is oil and gas golf you know oil and gas games like who can ooh, who can ooh, swing a okay. sledgehammer it's a pretty good idea oh, oh i have good ideas in here and I'm not even drinking the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Give me some more points. Um, well, we said the barbecue competition. Mm -hmm. That's new this year. Mike Rowe's going to be there this year. It's free. It's always free to attend if you pre-register. Um, booths are cheap. Yeah. That's pretty and much if you, Hey, if you're just, if you're in oil and gas or you're out, if you're a celebrity around the world and you just like, man... I'm going to go show my support for everything that I look around me that I love. And you want to show up mm -hmm. and flex and get us more Instagram views on your account? Thank you. Come on into Oklahoma. I think Sylvester Sloan might show up. He was talking about it at his, you know, what, he's making that show, right? Yeah. I think Sylvester will probably come. Surely. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get all, every celebrity in the state, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah, that's good. I mean, we, Gary Busey, does he still live here? <laughs> That'd be cool. I never knew he did. Oil. Oh, it equals, I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he also has the acronyms and like what they mean. It's pretty fun. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of companies are busy right now, obviously. And so we, you know, have heard that. But it's really, it's just a way, you know, A, to get business. If you have too much business that you can't handle it, it's a way just to show your support for the industry. Like you want to be there that day because this is going to be the day the industry converges. There we go. The fairgrounds. Hey, I know of another sponsorship you need. Wi-Fi sponsorship, you guys can get those Pelican boxes. I'll, I'll send you the link, but you guys can get the Pelicans, and then everybody has high-speed Wi-Fi in there, and then you guys can get some uh, 5G, you know, mini towers out there too. So well, there's two more spots. See, super Everything. extra sponsored, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good idea. We do offer. So all of our exhibitors, we don't nickel and dime anyone. They get free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, but, but it may not be great Wi-Fi. It service. drags it. Okay, okay. I can't go in there and go live. Good to know. I never, I didn't know. No, no. With that many people off of the, the one tower that Oklahoma City, you know, uses. I mean, come on. Our leaders in Oklahoma City, come on, Mayor. Get some more Wi-Fi towers going on. We need it. I don't know why. Send us that info on a Pelican. We, I mean. They're cool. Yeah. They're, they're just little boxes and, you, you know, you, they ship it to you and it's like rented for the day. 
and, mm. and it gives everybody high speed internet. See, this is what we need. Yeah. We need exhibitor yeah. feedback. Oh, so I'm we're nerd. always exactly. trying I'm, to optimize. I'm a nerd on that stuff. Like everybody there is mm-hmm. trying to get work done. Or when I show mm-hmm. up, what if that celebrity does come, mm-hmm. right? And they want to take that shot. I know it's mm-hmm. silly, but you're like, oh, I can't get out. Never mind. You know, and then it's wasted. Then we don't have the people show up. And it's just a one day event. Mm-hmm. So one day. there we go. We need people to. Yeah, it is the best way to find qualified candidates too if you're hiring. Are they having a hiring event there? Um, there are so people be. specifically having booths. I don't know if I should say them publicly, but there are some of the largest companies in Oklahoma that will have a booth indoors for the first time ever. Nice. Um, and I know that they are hiring. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons they said they wanted a booth. There we go. All, we're begging for uh, more hands. We need mm-hmm. we need young minds. We need mm-hmm. women. We need diversity. Yeah. All the thoughts so that we uh, continue to grow. Yeah. I love it. How do people get a hold of you? Well, our website, they can look at our website. The expo website is okayoilexpo.com. Okayoilexpo.com. Yeah. Uh, or our website, oerb.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can find our contact information there. How come SOAR doesn't have all of its own social media platforms? Well, because it's not its own group. Um, So it was, which is why it's kind of confusing. But technically, if you think again of our education programs, we have student education, we have public education or energy literacy, and now we have producer education. So it's really just a piece of what we do every day. Um, And so that's another thing we're kind of working on is... Just go ahead and get it done. I mean, it's like Mm -hmm. what? It takes like 30 minutes and SOAR will have all of its own pages. Yeah. Yeah. They can also be sub if you you already know this, right? Like LinkedIn can have sub pages. So there you go. Yeah. It's taken care of. It's a sub page of your uh, OERB. I'm here to help. Okay, well. I know I do all this stuff. You know, I do it all the time for AAD, IADC, SP, all that. <laughs> yeah, well. we need, I want to think through that. It's a good idea. We want people to know that, hey, this is a part of the OERB. This is something I we know. do every day. It's I not want kind of every a entity. Every single road to you get to you. Yep. Yep. If they type in, start typing acronym in, I want them to zip over mm-hmm. to the OERB. I really, and I think you guys agree, I think energy literacy might be the most vital thing we all need to be thinking about mm-hmm. for our future right now. It's it's scary how little people know. Mm-hmm. We do. You know, I talked about our ambassador program, which really we designed for industry people. Um, but we are going to at least explore within this next year adding another track that's just energy literacy. So it's for anyone who wants to go through, whether you're a legislator, whether you're just a you know, a, a doctor and you just want to know, well, whoever you may be, um, we want to create kind of a separate but but equal kind of component of that. That's for just the general public. Yeah, I mean, we can all look at the headlines today, yesterday, and probably tomorrow, and there's just a lot of, um, man, just completely false, you know, rhetoric and false data on what we do and how we do it and all the components that make our world, you know, good for humans, period. Mm-hmm. You know, that's right. And that's what I focus on, like everything else. You know, the, I'm sorry, but rivers, mountain streams, and flowers and all that stuff, very beautiful aesthetically, but none of that out there is conducive to like making life easier on earth for human beings. You know, we've, we've created everything we need to flourish and going forward, we will need more of it. Which I think it's important to note, which a lot of, some of our stuff does, it, is it doesn't have to be, I guess, well, it doesn't have to be one or the other. There doesn't have to be a line in the sand. Uh, it's, it's continuing to fund right. everything. Like ours is what's powering all of that. Mm-hmm. It's what powers someone to have the time to, Hey, guess what? We now have enough energy to make uh, food, shelter, clothing, you know, not something that we're just scrounging by to get. But now we have, you know, I can go to Walmart and get a $5 t-shirt and a meal and all that stuff so cheaply that for the rest of the day, I'm not scrounging for all those resources. So now I have time to sit down and start doing calculations. And I mean, it's like, it just, those fingers out to everything. Yes, having an access to reliable energy and some of the micro videos that we saw and Scott Tinker modules in our ambassador program talk about this too. It's, you know, kids being able to study at night when it gets dark because they can turn on the light. And then it's, you know, educating people about where, how they turn on the light, where, the, where does that energy come from? Um, Dave, the Lenormand, our chairman, uh, was talking to Micro about that oh, specifically. Man, Dave Lenormand, uh-huh. that is my boy. Yeah, <laughs> he's awesome. And so that's why he's saying it's really hard. We are trying to educate people about where the energy energy comes from. A lot of people just think you flip on the switch and there it is, but they don't realize it's oil and gas. And if it, the wind isn't, you know, blowing and the sun isn't shining, it's, you know, natural gas. It's reliable. 
and yeah, I mean that's that's another that's another component is wind and solar are they're neat and they're in their infancy, but we can't really store their energy yet either. And oil and gas has a natural storage, you know, the, and it's you know from you know solar solar at some time, you know, sometime near the dinosaurs, sunlight hit all those microorganisms, and now we have you know natural resources, but right. it's it's stored underground for us, and mm -hmm. we it's reliable because we can go get it when we want now right. with our engineering. I mean, it's it's fascinating. That's right. 96% of manufactured goods are made with oil and gas byproducts. So that's your cochlear implant. That's your heart valve. That's your syringe. It's things that really impact the quality of life for everyone. Um, and so, yeah, that's the challenge. It's why Katie and I and your job is some of the hardest because it's hard to get people if they just don't really care. They just, mm -hmm. they, they enjoy our products, but they just want to read a headline and they, you know. And they, they just want to disagree yeah. or they just want to make it seem something bigger than yeah they may themselves. be green if it's convenient for them or easy what for the, them but why can we not make we're going to maybe you two can do it no one's going to listen to me i'm an older white guy but maybe just maybe we can change it and go you know what we we can't afford to call it fossil fuels anymore let's just call it earth energy because green energy that beautiful marketing genius sometime mm -hmm. in the past went let's call it anything alternate other than fossil fuels green energy and people buy it hook line and sinker regardless mm -hmm. of what it is this is bubble gun power green energy oh it's green <laughs> it's green let's toss all of our money at it and see what happens i mean well that's why we hire mike Rowe. we're hoping people are like oh i like mike Rowe. i think that he's got a lot of common sense he's a nice guy you know and he's and so that's you know why we're hoping the stories that he tells will maybe reach some people there you go it's always sense. the continuing education with that too and the connection that they can make with mike Rowe or with whoever it is Oh, man, I love what you guys are doing. I'm really just so excited for you. Thank you for doing what you do because we all, for for years and years and years, I had my head buried in work. And I looked up and I looked around and I was like, what? There's people that don't like oil and gas. There's also people, yeah, that's always me. There's people that don't like oil and gas. What? They also don't like farming and ranching and like all the things that, like you just like, if you're from a small town in Northwest okay. Oklahoma, just trudging ahead and working and thinking everybody's high-fiving you. Oh, oh no, that's not the case. Specifically, uh, when Mike went to the diner in Chickasha, he was talking to the Chickasha mayor and he was saying our two industries here are ag and energy. And he and Mike Rose said those are the two of the biggest, you know, mis misinformation industries in in the U.S. There's people that are fighting against our yeah. industries. That's all it is. So, Absolutely. Know, I mean, it's it's just marketing teams going out and putting. I need to take money from this investor, and this guy over here wants it for his project. So I'll come up with whatever narrative I need to to move that money. I mean, well, well done. It's working. So we haven't, as an industry, ever thought we needed to, but apparently no one understands. So now, like, hey, all hands on deck. Go out and educate everyone around you. And start with your own bubble. Make sure your own family understands right. what we do. 100%. And go out from there. And you all have the tools to go give them what they need. Data, facts, everything. That's right. And we're always adding. We're always optimizing. We want, you know, we want people to get involved. Again, like the stuff that we create is for the oil and gas industry. We want them to take ownership of it. Share it on our social. Share it with your network, just like you said. Um, and if there's a resource that you need and that we might be missing, we could either find it for you or provide it. So, um, we love to hear from people and, um, are always open to feedback. Man. And you guys got a lot of, I mean, all, you gotta go check out all their social media. They have so much, I mean, available and, you know, from, you know, 30,000 foot views down to a little bit more granular. So it's, it's nice. Yeah. I can't think of anything else to add to all the things you do, but I'll keep, you know, trying to help, you know, you can call me and I'll roll. Well, we sleep. appreciate, appreciate you. you. Yeah. Well, Having us. Heroes right here, buddy. You know it. Let's go. <laughs> you're a hero. You're telling yeah. stories every week. Exactly. Uh, uh, go around the room one more time, just in case. Matt Hill, night fire specialist. I uh, build little uh, equipment to make sure your oil and gas sites are safe. Katie Kenmuth, Dara McBee. Thank you. Appreciate y'all very you. much. Thank you. Appreciate you. God bless everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>